on guys, Cody from Motorcycle MV. Welcome to another video. If you're new, welcome. We do videos on motorcycles, fixing them, tips and tricks. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. I thought it would be kind of cool to see what the inside of a factory technician's toolbox looks like. How does he operate throughout the day? There are a number of different factors that come into play when it comes to this topic because it's a little bit different from the normal, you know, weekend warrior DIY type setup, I would assume. Unless you've been in the field for many, many years and you know certain things that you just like more. But I wanted to go over some of the factors that matter so you can kind of decide on what you may want and what you don't want, what would be helpful to have when it comes to working on your own bike. Make sure you join the mailing list. Tons of new stuff coming out all the time. All I want to do is send you a notification on when that stuff drops or if I have an awesome, helpful bit of content or video for you to see, I want you to know about it. And just for joining the mailing list, I have provided you a uh, free troubleshooting cheat sheet that I have made personally to help walk you through basic troubleshooting stuff on a motorcycle. It's pretty helpful. It's helped a lot of people out. Join in. And if you want to know even more about your motorcycle, basic maintenance stuff, when it comes to electrical, brakes and tires, carburetors, engine stuff, I mean, all types of subjects, you're going to want to be on that mailing list because there is some awesome stuff getting ready to drop, and I don't want you to miss out on that. I mean, I'll tell you what, realizing that I'm shooting a video in the shop, I feel like it's been at least two and a half years since I have. Remember the train? Y'all remember the train? It still goes by. Every day. Also, how cool is it to get a nice 2022 GL1800 automatic in the background? It's gorgeous. But enough of that. Toolbox. Factory technician. The workhorse the money-making machine, I guess you would say, other than the person doing the work. A couple different things come to mind when it comes to tool selection, um, tool branding, tool prices. A lot of things matter. I will say that the main difference between what I would have set up or what I use daily and have been using daily for over 10 years now is I need it to last that long. Okay, so many people can get by on a lot cheaper or more streamlined tool warehouse style equipment like Harbor Freight or Northern Tools or Pacific Tools or whatever they're called. And there's a lot of cool stuff out there now, even on social media and different independent companies who put out some pretty tough stuff. But I need my stuff to last. I need it to be readily available, quickly, easily usable, versatile. I need some type of warranty on the part so I don't have to just be driving to the tool store every time I need a new tool because one breaks middle of my shift, which happens, I mean, all, all the time. The cool thing about having tool guys who come to the shop is that it's just the convenience of them being there. Like, yeah, all this stuff broke, please replace it for free because I paid about five times as much as I should have to have this for you to do that, so take it. But tool breakdowns often don't happen too much if you're obviously using the tool in the correct way or whatever. Regardless, I'm not here to bash anybody's setup or their toolbox or how what tools they can afford and what they can't. I just thought it'd be interesting to show you guys what I have. This whole lane that I have is pretty much broken down into different sections and organized in that manner so I can know exactly where to go to get to it. If anything is out of order, if anything is misplaced in a different box, it's pretty much gone. It's gone until a couple weeks from now or a day or two from now when I open up the drawer underneath it and find that tool that I was looking for. Everything has to be in a specific order for my day to flow like I need it to. I need to be able to reach, grab, plug in, and go. Whereas when I'm at home, I spend half my time pulling my hair out trying to remember if I brought that tool inside or if it's in the carry-on tool bag or if it's somewhere around this garage. I can't have that here. So let's go box by box, break it all down, show you guys what I got. Again, many things may not be needed. Some stuff I have that's just one tool that does one thing. It goes into the axle slot to pull the axle out, and it's a Phillips head driver that I'll never use on anything else. It's just, I need that tool there. You know what I mean? So, here we go. I'm going to say starting from left to right, this stuff is probably not as important as you would need in your own garage. This is specific type stuff. Electrical box. This is where I, I store all of my electrical things that I need to do any job possible. All of my wiring. Okay, zip ties, electrical tape, different colors, different gauges, all wrapped up. I have sheaths for different harnesses and that kind of stuff. So pretty much wiring that I can grab, clip, make new make new connectors and keep rolling. Below are two drawers I don't really use too often. They just store a lot of old broken switches that I haven't been able to fully throw away because of certain aspects of them. And there's something on that that might be good that I just want to hold on to just in case. 
Same with this side. It's another assortment of factory harness stuff that I like to grab from, factory color wiring that I pull from harnesses that got replaced or um, whatever. Next we'll move on to my secondary box beside my main toolbox that's kind of more of my very specific or specialty style tools that I would maybe use on a very specific case. But I do have my array of electronic guns, battery powered things. Um, Snap-on doesn't even make these ones anymore, but they are workhorses. I have different heads for each one from 3 8 to quarter inch to long Phillips head drivers. I need all of those to be specific to each gun so that I can grab it, grab the socket, click it, and move in. You know what I mean? This is a ratcheting system. I, I actually really like Milwaukee stuff. I'm becoming more and more of a fan of this fuel line. But these are quick little small impacts, fast stuff to get things on and off. This is a great gasket scraper. It's got a tungsten bit on the head. A little triangle piece that you can just unscrew and flip when it starts to wear out. Amazing for gaskets. This thing will rip into aluminum, but it will tear off any type of gasket that's left on the surface. So it looks, so it works really well. Just got to be delicate with it. So, specialty box. Stuff down there is very specific to certain things. I have butane lighters veneer calipers, a lot of sandpaper, a lot of different types of grinding discs and that kind of stuff. Below is kind of a catch-all for stuff that I've probably purchased and didn't need. I do have a huge assortment of shims down there that, that are kind of nice. They're not necessarily hot cam. There's a lot of Honda stuff in there as well, but hot cam makes a great shim kit if you are doing a lot of shim jobs, but normally anybody at home, you probably wouldn't need that. But top box, we have all of my feeler gauges from long to short, medium, different tappet adjusters, different style of feeler gauges, different ones that I know that I love and work well, as well as triples and doubles of everything so I'm not looking too long for what I need. Next drawer will be all of my brushes. Brass, steel, circular, oval, plastic, toothbrushes. This is to get through any kind of rust, corrosion, whatever, handlebar levers that I need to to clean, make it nice and clean and keep on moving. And these are pretty awesome. They attach straight into those guns because of the locking anvil on the bottom. It's pretty awesome stuff to have. They wear out pretty quick, but if you use them the right way to last you a while, try to keep them only functioning in one clockwise or counterclockwise motion. Don't go back and forth with them. They'll last a while. And next would be files. Bought a really nice set from Snap-on. Um, these things are incredible. They're a little bit fine, but... I will probably never need another file kit. This thing is killer, and I really don't use it too often, but when you need to, and, and it's there, triangular bit, circular, rat tail, two different flat style, it's pretty killer to have. Before we get into the main box, let's just go over to this right hand box right here. This is, again, more of a specialty. I would consider this all carburetor and gasket stuff. A lot of different carburetor stuff inside of here, different cleaning bits, micrometers. There's a couple of special tools from Honda back in there. I do have a riveting gun in there, but and I have a huge pile of gasket sets um, from customers wanting to rebuild motors and we buy a, a kit online because Honda doesn't sell the kit anymore or whatever. You end up with just a lot of stuff. Maybe just to get one particular gasket, you got to buy a whole kit. But this is all just, I mean, this is not really important to you guys. This is just carburetor stuff. Different gaskets, different parts that have, that have been taken off of junk carbs or whatever to keep. Same within here. Random carb jets and gasket sets. Now, the bread and butter. The alpha and omega of all things that I need besides a special tool from Honda or something dumb like that. But this box pretty much contains everything that I would need to do the job well and um, to the best of my ability. So top drawer will always be my arranged sockets, Allen sockets, long sockets, drivers, and quarter inch stuff. I do keep everything from 3 8 on one side to quarter inch on the other, okay? But obviously all sockets needed, all Allens needed, Torx bits, flatheads, different sizes of flathead sockets. Sockets come in huge help when it comes to Allens, especially on Hondas. Hondas use a lot of Allen head style stuff, um, and it's good to have a nice set. I would recommend you going as top of the line as you can get Mac, Maco, Snap-on with your Allen sets because one of the top five tools that I will use daily a thousand times a day. Okay, standard and, and metric, 
This is a cheaper standard set because, I mean, how often are we dealing with standard unless we're doing an aftermarket part? I've never had to replace these in about 12 years. Um, this is a deep 3-8 set. I do have long swivels, and I have specific ones like this deep 6 to do certain shock stuff. Um, all of your attachments that you need, all of your converters. Converters are super important. Impact ones are great to have. They last forever. Spark plug sockets. A couple of different arrangements for 3 8 drivers. A small little breaker bar is great to have. I love this thing. My favorite ratchet ever, and it is made from Stanley. Numbers are 85, 891. I love it because it has this dial on top with a little bit of a grip, and it's just a killer tool. I've kept this thing lubed. I would love it if this thing never broke, but having that ability is really, really cool to have. A lot of, a lot of them are just buried inside. This is actually an old vintage one as well. This is a super ratchet that I got out of my dad's toolbox. Kind of keep it in here all the time. Barely use it. This is a cool little T-handle that I like to have. This is a, a reversible attachment, and you can flip counterclockwise and clockwise, and you can attach a T-handle to it which is kind of nice to have, just to get those quick motions. Quarter inch stuff, deep and short. I love this. This was a very expensive, long handled, snap on, fine tooth ratchet. Fine tooth ratchets are amazing, okay? You, just, you can't beat it. To have those big, clunky, click, 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 click style drivers is just kind of annoying. Having a really tight pattern allows you to get a lot of twist out of a little bit of movement. I love that. Okay, some of the stuff is special tool stuff, hydraulic valve adjustment tool, spoke wrenches, not really necessary. This is a great oil filter tool. Um, I use it all the time. Honda makes her own, but they're honestly a bear to get back off of the earth, the oil filter. This thing works great. I've had it for many, many years, and I've beat the crap out of it to get <laughs> filters off. Second box will always be my wrench sets. Okay, snap-on wrench sets. I've never had to replace any of these. They've never broken. I've had them for over 10 years. I love them. Different arrangement of shorties that I've probably ground down to make special tools to fit in until I found this amazing set of wrenches from Ulsa Tools online. But these things are super thin. And they are... You can't put a lot of torque on them, you know, because it's not that much meat like you would with snap-on. But look at the difference in that head. Really, really underrated tool that I own is this set of wrenches from Ulsa Tools. You guys can get them online. They're, I want to say they're upwards of maybe 70 to 80 bucks, but I love them. My, my 10 is in my bag at home. I, was, I, I literally brought it home just to use it to tighten some throttle cables. Really, really cool tool to get in tight spots. Arrangement of large axle wrenches. Um, again, for large axles. I do love these but again not as important to own you know it's it's kind of just a bonus tool that i like to use sometimes next drawer will always be my phillips and blathead drivers gotta own this you guys need to stop what you're doing now go on amazon and buy this set i think it's called a megadon or megadora um, from vessel number one number two number three phillips head same with the flatheads and two nubs i think it's like 80 bucks best purchase I've ever made. These are JIS style screwdrivers, magnetic tip, workhorses. I love them. It's my go-to driver every time, no matter what. I have to have a long assortment of Phillips and flatheads. You would be surprised at how amazingly handy these tools come into play. I use those all the time. And this is just a, a quick grab arrangement of certain Phillips head drivers. I'm not going to go through them. It's just, There's some cheap ones. There's some snap-on ones. Honestly, I go to these every time. Um, a couple of carb adjustment tools. This one's from Motion Pro. I kind of like it. There's not too many good options out there unless you want to spend like 200 bucks on a Honda one. That's a great tool to have though. Chisels, wood chisels also work great on gaskets. Next box will always be my plier set. Yeah, okay, there it is. Vice grips, good to have. Long needle nose, I, these are by far my favorite tools that I have, the long needle nose pliers. Reverse snap ring pliers are pretty awesome to grab inside of things. Um, but a standard array of pliers. I mean, I'm not gonna go through each one. Some snips are great. I wouldn't say you need to have snap on stuff to do this, but I would re highly recommend you getting some long needle nose pliers. These are a bunch of, uh, I think they're called hemostats or hemostats to just clamp off certain things like fuel lines or whatever. 
and below that is the uh, half inch stuff. Snap on torque wrench, I trust it. You don't have to have snap on, but you should have a torque wrench. Different assortment of hammers, no real need to go into this stuff either. It's really good to have a nice breaker bar. Um, this stuff gets used on the bigger stuff that's super, super tight. So you want to have a good set of that if you want it to last. I've never had to replace any of these besides this one that I lost. Bottom drawer is not worth talking about, but it's pretty much where my battery charger lives. Some testers, some random air tools, and that's it. And going to the right, we have all of my small stuff. Picks, small little flathead drivers. Tiny things that I can grab, grip, scrape, whatever I can do. I need something tiny, this is where I go. Snap ring pliers, um, good to have. I actually just got these. They're pretty awesome for plastic clips for like four wheelers and side by sides. They grab on the head of that little pop snap and man, these things work great. I love them. Allen bits, T-handle, I love having. You can get a fast little spin on these bad boys when, you, when you're really working. These were sent to me from um, one of my members and they are from the, I think they're maybe from Denmark. It's, he was saying that, that they're one of the top brand tools over there and I freaking love these things. I grab these all the time, throw them in my bag, go home with them. I use them at work all the time. They're super strong. I've never bent one or anything and they really, really hold on to Allen style bits and they have an awesome little swivel and this thing like unlocks and opens up. Pretty cool tool, I love them. Wera, thanks again, you know who you are. And this will be all of my drill bit and tap and die. Um, oh, this is a cool little tool. This is a socket, right? That just plugs, it's a, you know, three eighths or quarter inch depending on what size, but you can just take your tap and go, come on one hand, take that. And it, it's a locking socket. So you just put it in the one that fits. This is really hard to do with one hand. And it will only lock yeah in one direction so i can go left or right put it in a, put it in a um a driver and just ratchet it in it's awesome so you don't have to pull this thing out or that thing out actually you would have to pull that thing out for dies but still don't have to use that little t-handle thing it allows you to get into like a really far hole and do what you got to do but definitely I would go high end on your tap and die sets because you don't want them to break. Even though I have broken snap on ones before. And I do have a, an expensive cobalt set of drill bits. I just purchased this last year and it was the best decision I ever made. I feel like there's two ways to go about drill bits. You get people who are like, well, you can get a set of 5,000 from Northern Tools and it's $17.99. And if one breaks, I'll just go buy another whole set. That's great. That's a lot of tools to have and a lot of space to store them. I'd rather have one set that will last me as long as I allow them to. This is where my Q-tips live. Your toolbox needs to have a couple sets of Q-tips. They work so well. I use them so much. I just bought that box. I just ran through another one last month. I love them. Nothing too important lives down there anyways. And of course I have the assortment of chemicals. I'm going to make a video on certain chemicals I, I, I would recommend, but this is a catch-all for many different types um, to use for certain jobs. Obviously we have our tie straps, carb sink tools. This is the Fluke 117. All you need, all you need. And it has a dope little light up screen. Oops, that I love. It's a great meter. It does everything you would need and more. So that's it guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to see the perspective of what I uh, have to use and work through every day. Um, and it needs to last, That that's the main thing. It needs to, be, it needs to last, it needs to be quick to get to and um, easy to clean up and put back, you know, in an organized fashion. Again, these, these tools are put to work. I mean, years and years of beating on these things, and I have a lot of the original stuff that I got from when I first bought all of my tools. But there's always something cool being built and made, like Vesselcraft drivers. I mean, those things are amazing. Amazing. They're not that expensive. If you wanted to get a driver set like that from Snap-on, you would easily spend 250 bucks. Of course, they come with a warranty, a lifetime warranty on them, but still. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the like button if you did like it. Subscribe to the channel. Tons of cool stuff comes out all the time. And again, join that mailing list. Cool stuff is coming your way with videos a lot like this one being built as we speak. Thank you guys so much for checking it out, and I'll see you guys next time. Cody from MotorcycleMD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. Or 
whatever's in your garage. Later.